Hey what's up everybody, it's Kellen here from Start Your Systems again and welcome back to MXGP Pro Career Mode where today we are in Argentina and I apparently didn't know how to put my own bike in gear. Uh, we're in round number two of the career mode of 19 races in the MX2 Championship and continuing on with my standard career mode, I did the extreme career mode video at the very beginning of playing this game but uh, for use of uh, not making long boring 30 plus 2 minute lap videos we will continue on with the standard career mode and these ones are a little bit shorter five minutes plus two laps or maybe even five minutes plus one lap motos uh, so we get two motos in and Jesus Christmas I've crashed twice this is not going to be very easy to catch up from <clears throat> but we're continuing on and Argentina is a very fun track I've actually had a couple chances to play it already um, one of maybe the ten or so tracks I've already played on this game I gotta get down and play all 19 eventually but I like this track. The flow of it's really good. It's I think it's a really good addition to um, the MXGP scene in general. They went there the first time four years ago now, I believe. And uh, always seems like a really nice track. Um, dirt looks great. Just utter chocolate cake in real life. Um, and then the crowd seems to be pretty well into it and it's a good way for them to um, go down to South America and see fans that uh, are down there because they don't do the Brazilian GP anymore so I like Argentina I think it's a good addition and uh, in this game like I said I think it's a pretty good track and a rendition of the track it uh, it's got a better flow I think than some of the other tracks I've already been able to play on and uh, I don't know you can't really tell much of a difference between the dirt in this game I feel like but this dirt does hold you in a little bit better I feel like the ruts that actually form matter as opposed to Qatar which in the career mode video that you saw me play on Qatar uh, ruts didn't really mean diddly squat it seemed like you could just kind of ride over them and if you hit an embankment then sure it it acted as if it was a rut and you could bounce off of it but this one um, you actually kind of feel yourself going over the ruts a little bit more um, so I think the track works a little bit better in that sense but I don't know other than that it's nothing terribly special most of the other tracks have a pretty similar feel when it comes to traction and grip and everything like that and I'm still getting used to it all uh, of course uh, the whole rear end sliding out of a corner kind of a thing that wasn't a part of the games prior is still catching me off guard and I crash uh, often doing that and I crash often when I over jump something and land to flat like I just did right there um, still just not a hundred percent accustomed to it I I feel like with this game, like you just expect it to have that arcade type feel like the other games prior to it had. Um, but really it's uh, not quite the same. It's it's really more realistic feeling with uh, some of the aspects it added, some of the aspects that they took away from the old game. Like, like I don't feel like you float on the track as much anymore. Uh, with the rear wheel not spinning as fast as it should be, it does give that sense that it looks like you're kind of floating. Um, but one of my biggest problems with MXGP3 was how it really didn't feel like I was ever on the track. Um, it always felt like I was hovering an extra six inches above it. So this is an, th this did a nice job of kind of bringing it back to the MXGP2 days a little bit. Like MXGP1, it felt like you're always in the soil, like <laughs> just buried down six, seven inches deep. Uh, MXGP2, I felt, was a little bit more evened out where you didn't feel like you were in the ground necessarily but you still had uh, you know good things to bank off of the ruts developed a little bit nicer um, and so far I think MXGP2 is still probably my favorite of the series between like 1 through MXGP Pro now or MXGP4 is kind of like the loose term of this game because that's really what it is it's the fourth MXGP game they've made but uh, obviously calling it Pro makes it uh, a little bit off the mark goodness graciousness the little fall off crashes I keep having I also learned thank you to whoever yeah, I think two or three of you guys said this in the comments but when you get up from a crash like that and you'll see me just like clicking through gears wide open going like ah, I can't move I'm not going anywhere uh, the the trick to that and that's how you also get good starts in this game is to um, you know click into gear and do the whole wide open thing but kind of uh, jab jab the throttle a little bit you know just little room room in there and it 
breaks the bike out of being wide open mode into, you know, bogging a little bit. And that's where you start hooking up and get going a little bit faster. Um, I couldn't really show that off the start in this one because I got a terrible start and I wasn't in gear. So I'll try to do that in moto number two and show you what I'm talking about. All right, we have made our way up to sixth, trying to get a little bit further up. Sitting second in the championship standings if you... Uh, didn't watch the last video, which actually, I apologize, there was Indonesia in between the uh, Qatar video and now this one. And in Indonesia, I went 1-2 to move up to second in the championship standings. Still behind Paul's Jonas, who crushes it in this game. He is very fast, although it doesn't look like he's winning right now. It's actually maybe Thomas Kier Olsen winning this one. can't really see that far ahead. I just know that there's Mr. Brian Bokers right in front of me here. Yeah, Jonas is actually in fourth. All right, maybe I can uh, make up a couple spots here. Three laps to go. See me uh, swing wide and absolutely send it up onto this tabletop. I figured this out uh, day one playing this track because <laughs> I came out of the corner and forgot that that's like a wall jump to a table in real life. Just sent it, went for it all the way, <laughs> and uh, fortunately landed on the tabletop. No problem. And I was like, oh, all right, well, I guess that's just the line. Uh, super easy to do, you just have to kind of carry your momentum around the outside. Uh, I've actually OJ'd it a couple times and smashed my face on the little monster energy pole that's hanging out above it. But most of the time it props you up right into the right spot. Haven't done it on a 450 yet, not 100% sure whether or not that's the same case or not. Probably a 450 you'd uh, hit the monster pole more often than not. So maybe you have to feather the throttle in a little bit, actually time the jump properly. Battle with Jonas, Prado, and Covington here. It's like the Husky KTM Schwara going on up here. Covington and Olsen, Rockstar Husqvarna teammates. And then Jonas and Prado, Red Bull KTM teammates. I'm just going to slot my little... Uh, damn it, what's the name of the sponsor? Well, the whole sponsor is covered on the shroud, so why get sponsored by them if they're just going to get mud all over them? I think it's Garda. It's the sponsor that I'm running right now. Garda Suzuki. No idea what Garda is. It says like Lake Garda or Garda Lake on it. So maybe it's a, I don't know, like a lake that has festivities and things like that. Like a Lake Tahoe or Lake Powell. Those lakes I'm more familiar with. All right, let's run down Olsen for the lead here, going on to the final lap. That's not good, coming up short on that double. You can definitely come up short on jumps in this game, but it's really a speed thing, the whole coming up short or over jumping something and having a fall off crash. Definitely more speed related uh, than anything because you can you can frame some really gnarly things, uh, like right out of a corner, do like a drop down or something like that and just frame it. Uh, if it was like a step down, for example, and as long as you're not going too fast, you can usually land two wheels down and be fine. Um, the way to ride out of almost anything if you're going long is nose first, which just feels so counterintuitive to what, you know, a normal motocross racer would know. Just because you're kind of trained to land rear wheel first in most circumstances, especially if you're going long or short on a jump. Um, that way you can kind of use the rear wheel first, then soak it up with your legs a little bit before the front tire then hits the ground soaks up the rest of the jump for you so it's a little bit backwards in this game but it's the same way in sim i have no idea why but landing nose first in sim uh, with the clutch in is primo you can land really far past the jump in mx simulator with the clutch in and nose first and you're just good to go uh, i hope that doesn't lose me the race yeah it's probably gonna so so far in this championship i uh seem to either win or crash a lot Right now, I'm trying to still win while crashing a lot. Gonna battle Olsen of the line here. Block pass. No, you're not getting me back. <laughs> Got him. All right, now just don't crash to the last. Oh, come on! How is that cutting the track? Ah, oh, stupid. Stupid move. All right, well, I still finished in front of Jonas. So we'll see if that helps Let's with getting the championship the elite away. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna show us the tally. And then we'll go into Moto 2. Stupid. Could have just swung around that little outside, you know, inside barrier rut thing. 
I, I cut the track quite a bit harder than that earlier in the race, and it was fine. Whoa, different conditions. It's a little bit uh, darker out in this one. All right, so shift up to first, and gate drops, and you kind of like feather the throttle out, and there we go. That's a much better start. Going to kind of be able to almost lead him into turn one. Use the outside line. So you want to, you know, like gate drop and... It's almost like the whole feathering the clutch technique that you use in real life. You just don't want to be using the clutch to do it. You just want to kind of drop the gate, let off the gas just real fast to let the, the engine reset from full bore to not. And I don't know, it works. It's, it's, a, it's a weird technique that somehow works in this game. So just like that, we're into the lead. I'm going to try to win this thing because I'd really like to have the red plate into the next GP. Which I think is, this is the last of the quote unquote flyaway races that started the season in 2017. As that is the season this game is based off of, of course. Um, flyaway races are any ones that are pretty much not in Europe. Although it's a world motocross championship, I mean it is pretty much considered the European motocross championship for the most part. Um, because it's made up of mostly European riders and raced on mostly European tracks with European teams. Um, the reason it's not European Championship is because obviously they travel the world. So we start off at Qatar, uh, go to Indonesia, Peng Hall Penang, and then go to Argentina, which botch in the name again, but it's, I believe it's called Nekuen in Argentina, before they go to, I believe last year's Valken Sward was round four in the Netherlands. And there is an actual European championship within the FIM regulations that runs concurrent with the World Motocross GP, so I'm, I'm not saying that like this should be called the European Championship, I'm just merely suggesting it's a lot of European teams and riders involved <laughs> and a lot of European races. Um, but you know, it's kind of classified as that way anyway. There's always the AMA versus GP debate basically AMA versus or like America versus Europe as it always is you got the Cairoli, Hurlings, Dassault, uh, Fevra, mix of you know those are four different countries represented against American riders but that would be like your four uh, elite GP riders currently maybe add Tim Geyser to that mix of course and then um, throw it up against American riders like Tomac, Barsha, I guess you could clump it into the AMA discussion and have Muscan and Roxon in there as well. And then we always get to decide who's the best of the rest at the Motocross the Nations. And hopefully this year everybody will go, including Eli Tomac who has skipped the last two years. Alright, one lap down, or maybe that was the second lap, I totally forgot. Yeah, I think we have gone two laps already, talking my way through this race. I have a pretty sizable lead already. This is on, uh, I mean, if you haven't watched me play these series already, this is on realistic difficulty, so like the hardest it can get with realistic physics. Uh, I have manual gearbox, so I'm doing all the shifting myself. Um, I think it's on like as hard as it can get. I've got no rewinds. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think you can add anything else that would make it more, or I mean less, more difficult. I don't know what I'm, I'm saying right there. Uh, so it's on like the hardest difficulty it can get and it's still not necessarily the hardest thing to win. Uh, but what I do like is that in that first moto you could see it was a challenge to get through the front or get to the front of the field. Uh, bad start, started back there with a bunch of other guys. And to get all the way up to Olsen leading the race, yeah, I mean, I did it in seven, eight minutes, but it still wasn't just like I blew past the field and, and caught him. Uh, I like that this game has kind of like separation riders from the front to the back. I have a very different skill level, it seems. And I like that because that's realistic, you know, it's not like, you know, no offense, but it's not like a guy that's going to finish 15th every weekend is suddenly going to win a GP. Um, whereas you'd expect the guys up up at the front regularly at a GP like the Jonas's and the Prados and the Covington's and stuff like that to be good in this game. And that was something that was always a miss to me uh, with the MX vs. ATV series and still kind of is like I still 
find when I play a mix of ATV all out that uh, some lesser tier riders end up crushing it and ending up like second or third behind me. Like, I still remember like playing MX versus ATV Unleashed and you'd have, uh, man, I'm trying to remember one of the back markers that was in that game, but basically, you know, ch that game had Chad Reed in it and uh, I think it had Carmichael and Stewart too. That game had the talent up and down the board, <laughs> but those guys, you would expect them to finish up front every race because they were the best riders in the world then. And for some reason, you'd always have just like miscellaneous results where they would finish eighth one race, fourth the next, twelfth the next, or whatever it was, and uh, just felt a little unrealistic to me. So I like that this aspect they add, you know, realistic comparisons between the best riders in the world down through the field. It's not just a uh, random assortment of guys finishing up front. It's that way in, in the GP class too, which I've done very limited playing in, but it is still, you know, if you race in the GP class in this game, you're, you're going up against Hurlings and Cairoli and Geyser and stuff. It's not like, uh, see, I just don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but someone who had finished 15th isn't up front winning the race all the time. So I like it. All right, two to go in Argentina on our way to maybe claiming this GP victory as long as I stay on the track. Going 2-1, and hopefully I will carry the red plate into next week or next video, whenever that is, so I can run that fancy-dancy red plate on this Hara Suzuki. You develop these bikes in this game, by the way. I, I haven't really touched on it much, but you can develop the bikes that you ride on because you can't get on factory teams in this game by earning fame points, which I don't think necessarily directly equates to how many fans in the game you do or do not have but like right now I have 1200 fame points and you can uh, unlock more upgradable parts for the bike by reaching certain thresholds of fame points I don't really know what that means um, I would have figured it had something to do with like how much teams or you know those corporate sponsors liked you and, and wanted to support you, I guess. So I assume that's maybe the fame within the industry that it's talking about. Um, but you actually start with like a couple parts, which in the first video, I believe I showed off, you, you get to put a couple like specific parts on the bike. Like I think I have a Yosh exhaust on right now. Um, maybe have like Galfer brakes or something like that. Um, and as you gain more fame points, you unlock like the FMF pipes and you know things like that. Not to say that Yosh and FMF are incomparable and FMF is better, but I think that like as you grow through the game, it gives you different parts to choose from. Is, is more or less what I'm getting at here. Um, and I'm curious to see how much that that helps because some things were just non-unlockable. I I think that I couldn't upgrade tires um, and a couple other parts just from the beginning. It only gave me a, a select few, so. It might help really upgrade the bike. And then the same system is still in place from any MXGP game before this, where as you play the game more, you get like skill points that go towards skirt, uh, certain skill sets. And I, I showed you guys that video where if you do the training elements in this game, you actually get like upgraded skill points. Um, so the rider can like whip faster, turn faster, brake faster, start better, etc. Um, those skill points also come into effect, so if you, you know, win a bunch of races, your skill points go up, you level up the character, as it were, and then, um, yeah, your riding capabilities get a little bit better. So that still exists, and then the fame thing with the whole, you know, upgrading parts and stuff, that's kind of new. So, a couple features to talk about in this video. Um, I will have more to talk about in the next one for sure, and I believe we're going to Valken Sward next, but it looks like this 2-1 performance is going to win me the GP here at Argentina. And I thank you guys for watching another video here on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.